Hello party people, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Tori, thank you so much for being here today. For today's video, I have a February favorites for you all. I know we're like nearly two weeks into March, but I just came back from vacation, okay? I gotta ease back into it. I have quite a few fashion favorites as well as some TV favorites. So grab a drink and let's get into it. Starting off with fashion favorites, the first fashion favorite I have is a pair of shoes and they are these Maison Margiela tabby sandals. I believe these come in a men's and women's size, but I have huge feet. So these are the men's tabbies. I actually bought these shoes last summer, but I did not really wear them a lot until I got part of the bottoms resold. And as you can see, after getting them partially resold, I've been wearing them a lot. <laughs> I feel like these shoes are definitely going to be my go-tos for this upcoming spring and summer season because they are so comfortable, but they also have a lot of personality. And because the tabby toe is so iconic, they really just add that extra oomph to an outfit that I'm looking for. These sandals got the most wear towards the end of February when I went to two destination weddings in Mexico. I ended up wearing these shoes both at the welcome parties of these weddings and the big day, like the reception and ceremony days and they were honestly the best shoes I could have packed for these weddings. I know it's not just me, but whenever I have to dress for an occasion such as a wedding where there's a very strict dress code and there's a lookbook involved, I always find it really hard to find ways to incorporate my own personal style and my own flair into an outfit. Don't get me wrong, I love both of the brides because they both included lookbooks and examples of the dress code that they envisioned for their wedding, which I found to be super helpful when it came to finding dresses for these occasions. I'm just someone who like does not love the more like quote unquote feminine shoe. Like I'm never really, I only recently started getting into heels. I'm honestly more of like a loafer or like a chunky shoe kind of girly. So when it comes to like an elevated coastal wedding, I'm like freaking out a little. I'm like, I don't know what to wear. These shoes I think were like the perfect balance. They definitely added a little bit of my personality into the outfit that I was wearing. I love these shoes. They were a little expensive at the time, but now I'm like, we're growing our little tabby collection. I love it. The next fashion favorite is a pair of jeans from Madewell. These are called the Low Slung Straights, and they're just like these super baggy jeans that are so comfortable and have been my go-to for those days where I don't feel like wearing a constricting bottom, but I don't wanna wear sweatpants. It has taken me so long to find a nice pair of low rise baggy jeans for my body type because I do have a larger waist size, but I don't have an ass. I don't have curves. So it's been really hard to find. And honestly, Madewell always comes through for me. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, my mother actually kind of hates these jeans, but I always know that if my mom kind of doesn't like an outfit, I know it's really cute. So I know these jeans are cute because my mom doesn't like them. Sorry, mom. I guess I'll continue with like bottoms. So the third fashion piece I've really been loving is this skirt from Aritzia. If you've seen any of my lookbooks from the last 12 months, you have seen this white tiered skirt. I got this black one from Aritzia. I love a tiered skirt. I think it's honestly one of my like fashion staples now. And even though this is 100% cotton, the material is just so different. And it definitely feels a little bit more pill proof the white one that i got last summer is definitely pilling because i've just been wearing it like nearly every other day i will say though i did buy this retail price and i know there might be some people in the comments being like you can just thrift that you can do whatever i'm currently at a size that is very hard to find secondhand thrifted or just like non-retail and so instead of giving myself a menti B about how I don't fit in anything, I'm just buying stuff retail. And honestly, thank God I can still go to the mall and find my size. That's incredible. Random tangent aside, I love this skirt. I know I'm gonna get so much wear out of it because I got so much wear out of the white one. So prepare to be sick of me in this skirt. My last fashion favorite is a top and it is this collared cheetah print number from Domson and Matter. Unless you live under a rock, I'm sure you're familiar with the cheetah print cargos from Domson and Matter, but I have been eyeing this top for over a year until I got it for myself this past Christmas and it has become one of my favorite tops. I'm a zillennial. I'm on the cusp of a millennial and a Gen Z. And in a true like millennial fashion, I love a good statement top. Besides the print, we also have this gigantic collar and these like incredible 
puffy sleeves. I have it in a UK 16, which I believe is a US 12. I would definitely recommend sizing down in tops. Um, I would say dresses are pretty true to size. I'm too scared to buy the cheetah cargos because I don't know how my size is gonna translate um, in their clothing, but this top is everything to me. I'm obsessed. This next section, I'm gonna call my shower faves. The first thing in this category is my hooded Tekla robe. Uh, I got it in this beautiful pink color in an extra large, so it would be a, a tad bit oversized, and I love it. I love the pink. It really gives me like a Louise energy, which is why I was really gravitating towards the pink. The towel material is just so plush and it's also a little thick. I really didn't want like one of those like super cushy, cozy, comfy robes because I know those deteriorate so quickly over time. But the more that you wear this like towel material, the cozier it gets. It has two really deep pockets on both sides and it also has like a little um, tie string around the waist. It's just like the most luxurious gift ever. If, if you have someone in your life who like you need a gift for, this robe might be it. If they don't have a robe yet, this might be the robe. I love it. The second and third items in this category are actually a set and I'm talking about the Crown Affair leave-in conditioner and hair towel. As you can see by the amount I've used, I love this Crown Affair leave-in conditioner. I originally tried this in a like Sephora mini pack before I actually committed to this big thing. The packaging is so beautiful and so luxurious. Oh, the scent is so delicious. It's so floral and amazing. And it's just, it's truly a product that I think has changed my hair. Speaking of this towel, I did not know how good a microfiber towel would work on my hair. I honestly used to think that like when people bought specific things for their hair, like a satin pillowcase or like a micro microfiber towel, I was like, that's just consumerism. That's just... People just want me to keep buying random shit I don't need. This, okay. This microfiber towel, I think really helps with my hair. I think it especially helps with dry time. And if you are someone who grew up in an Asian household and you were told if you go to bed with wet hair, you're gonna be sick, wrap your head in this for like an hour and it feels like it drastically helps dry your hair quickly, but also without any heat damage. I also just feel like a microfiber towel is just like one of those like little life luxuries that just makes the whole like washing your hair, getting dressed and showered process just a little bit more fun. I also really love how large the Crown Affair one is. So it really just like envelops your hair very nicely. And then when you're tying everything up, you just stick the tail in this little elastic bit it's so good. It's so simple, so good. I cannot believe I have a towel as a favorite, but it's true, I do. Uh, Next up, we have my beauty favorites, and it really is just the current limp combination I have on right now. Um, please excuse my trapped lip situation. I do have a little bit of like a, a dry patch on the bottom of my lip, but this is the lip combo I've been rocking in the last few videos. Anytime I go out, which is rare, but I still go out, Anytime I decide to put like makeup on, on TikTok, this is the lip combination I've been wearing. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk 2 Medium and the Glossier Ultra Lip in the shade Pony. This Charlotte Tilbury lip liner just glides on like butter. And I actually discovered this because I had it in my makeup collection. This was like a free birthday gift or gift with purchase. I wanna say like last year or two years ago. And I only started using it recently, but I am in love with it. I feel like it's like the perfect mauve shade. And then for my lip on top, somehow Glossier always knows how to get me. Let's see if I can do this. It is like the sheerest thing ever. Like, can you even see that? Again, it's just like a nice little like mauve color, a slightly more like my lips, but better. I love the ultra lips from Glossier because they are just so sheer that you don't even need like a mirror or anything when you need to reapply. However, I will say the packaging for the Glossy Ultra Lips sucks. Every time I put this in a bag, these are somehow apart. Like this just does not stay closed, which I think kind of sucks. And it's kind of a little like concerning if you think about like the hygiene of it all, but this lip combo is everything to me right now. 
Finally, let's talk about TV shows because I feel like these TV shows have just, they took over my brain in February. And February was a month that I discovered I can watch a full season. I can binge watch a TV show. And I'm not usually someone who likes to do that. I'm usually someone who likes to take my time, but these shows had me in a chokehold. The first, One Day on Netflix. I will be honest, I did not cry because I also like love the movie One Day with um, Anne Hathaway and Jim Sturgis. So I knew it was gonna happen. The soundtrack and the music selection in the show so good top tier. I'm literally reading the book. I literally bought a copy that says Anne Hathaway and Jim Sturgis on it because the tie-in for the Netflix series is ugly and has like an ugly texture, but this one is fun. I'm honestly only halfway through this and I did try to read this this entire month. It just wasn't in the cards. It is very loved and damaged from travel, but I haven't finished it, but I was obsessed with the series. I thought it was so good. Leo Woodall, we will put you in more rom-coms, my guy, because the way this man can convey heart eyes so well, and the way he looks like he's just in love with everyone that he comes in contact with. And I also ate up all of those fan cams of the two of them, okay? Like, I won't lie about you, but the 1975 has a whole different meaning now. So that's that. The second show that I'm obsessed with, which also had like a killer soundtrack, is Buccaneers on Apple TV. Something about Apple TV, Apple TV loves to put out hits and like not advertise them because where was I when all of this was being advertised? They literally play Nothing New by Taylor Swift featuring Phoebe Bridgers in the first episode. And I didn't know about it until like recently. This show is kind of feeling like the Bridgerton sized hole in my heart. So I feel like that'll give you kind of an insight onto what it's about. It basically follows these five girls who are growing up in the early 19th century, I think, or growing up in the 19th century, like coming of age vibes. And they are like new money in America and they go over to England for like their debutante, for a debutante season. And it follows them. And the main girly, it's kind of like in a love triangle with two men. It's juicy, it's fun, it's a little like, soap opera it's kind of giving like teen soap opera but in the best way if you ate up shows like gossip girl and the oc i feel like you're gonna eat up buccaneers and i loved it and i'm so excited for season two i need it immediately but i love the fashion in this show i feel like it just is really inspiring me at the end of 2023 i was really obsessed with poor things and the costume design in that movie so i feel like the aesthetics that are in buccaneers kind of recall to poor things and to me it's just like I need outfits with whimsy, okay? I need that to fuel me. Um, to, I, I might not be able to execute it, but I love to see it in front of me. It's really fun, I'm obsessed. Can someone else please be obsessed with it so you can talk about it with me, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it for all of my February favorites. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your favorites were from the month or if any of my favorites coincide with yours. I would love to know. If you wanna see more of me, feel free to follow me over on Instagram. I decided to become more active. I'm in my active Instagram era, I guess, and on TikTok, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.